As Netflix prepares its ad tier streaming offering for launch on November 1st, some analysts and insiders have some doubts. At the time of launch, there will be five major countries that uh, from day one will be, well, somewhat profitable, the US included. Leading the way, of course, is the US market, the Canadian market, the German market, etc., etc. And if rumors are to be believed here in the States, you'll pay a price somewhere between seven and nine dollars for your subscription to this ad tier. This price compares favorably to Disney's $8 a month ad tier, which is going to be launching a month later. And yet there are still skeptics, and rightfully so. So let's dive into this new direction for Netflix and also for the new direction of some of its competitors and very, very aggressive competitors at that. Here we go. When Netflix partnered with Microsoft in this endeavor, it indicated that they were in a rush and that they were being, well, aggressive. They needed a heavy hitter that could bring them the versatility that they needed to um, deliver their ads, of course, and also somebody who had a reputation that was solid and reliable. Well, they got that in Microsoft, so it was a pretty easy match. What we did know was the level of aggressiveness they wanted to display, not just display, they wanted to pursue things in a way that, uh, well, other companies just hadn't been going at things. They wanted to go big with their pricing. With a CPM of $65 as a starting point, Netflix actually was shooting for the moon. You see, that's a $45 premium over the current rate. And what does CPM mean? Well, that's cost per melee, which is basically a way to say cost per thousand views. It's probably the easiest way to look at it. So starting at this high point makes some, well, it makes sense, you know, from a negotiating standard, because look, you're gonna negotiate downward from there. It's a lot easier to go down than it is to go up. So there you go. A very new product after all, and with the fact that this they're basically the biggest boy on the block, at least as far as the streaming services are concerned, well, there's some advantages in offering something like this up for the very first time. Netflix has also set a ticking clock on all of this, at least as far as the advertisers go, because they want negotiations to end by September 30th. They also are requiring a $10 million minimum spend which basically sets us 15 days away, 15 days away to get your ad buys in. Crazy. At least Netflix is being reasonable when it comes to their expectations in regards to their initial subscriptions, at least for this new ad tier. And again, it's gonna offset some losses that they've had, at least they believe so. And right now they're telling those same advertisers that they're selling this deal to, this premium deal to, that they're expecting a minimum of 500,000 subs by the end of 2020. But they also suggested that their real expectations in those subscribers or subscriptions was about 1.1 million unique viewers in the United States alone, 4.4 million unique viewers globally. We're gonna get back to that unique viewers thing in a second. Now, keep in mind that all of this is in one quarter of business. That is very, very aggressive. Notice the word aggressive. I've said it a bunch of times. Uh, come to find out that they actually um, expect their ad tier alone to hit 40 million unique viewers by the end of the third quarter of 2023. So in four quarters, they expect to have 40 million unique viewers. 13 million of those unique viewers are just from the United States market alone promised we would talk about unique viewers. Well, Netflix knows there's more than one person in most households that are watching their content. They also know that there may be multiple households that are sharing the same account. Ah, now we're taking advantage of the fact that people password share. And on an ad tier account, maybe that's not such a bad thing. It might be a very interesting way to capitalize 
on something that unique. Now, let's get to the skepticism, because there is a lot of it from, well, a lot of Wall Street analyst types, and you know what? I don't blame them. First, all of this sounds absolutely grand. It's supposed to. It's a sales pitch. Uh, it will, of course, be profitable. You wouldn't set something like this up, do the research that you did, and align yourself with a heavy hitter like Microsoft if you weren't trying to make a buck. The impressions that advertisers are going to be buying are not going to be targeted at first. What does that mean? Well, that means the ads won't be aimed at any particular major demographic. They're not aiming it at a particular age group. It's just, you know, whoever shows up. It's gonna be interesting to see how that's received because advertisers will likely take a pause. They're looking at the CPM of $65 asking, at least up front, and they're getting very little for that premium. Again, that's a $45 difference than most advertisement that they're used to buying, or at least the space that they're used to buying. They're also not getting as much as far as um, transparency goes, of course, or, nor are they getting like a third party monitor such as um, Nielsen to actually, well, gauge the effectiveness of their advertising or whether or not it's actually being consumed at all. So. It's kind of like a huge, you know, just trust me, bro moment. And I don't think a lot of corporations in the middle of a, well, recession, let's use the right word. Uh, well, I don't think they're going to be uh, they're going to be too eager to do that. And of course, with one of the major magazines out there, and I use that in quotes because it's not really a magazine anymore, it's delivered electronically, Ad Age, of course, is like putting up a bunch of red flags when it comes to, well, what's going on at Netflix and these premium pricing. I don't blame them. On the consumer side, though, the ad tier product is going to look somewhat familiar. You're going to get uh, four minutes of ads per hour. Not too bad and you're going to get one pre-roll ad prior to, well, any film that you may view. So this is actually far less intrusive than many of the uh, ad-based streaming services that you may be familiar with. Uh, in fact, when you compare that to YouTube, that might feel like a pleasant surprise because sometimes if you pause something for too long, like to go get a drink or whatnot, you'll be watching an ad before you resume whatever it is you're watching. So maybe you'll be saved from some of those moments and that'll save you some time. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to skip these ads like you can on YouTube after a certain period of time, but even YouTube has unskippable ads, you know. Now, at the end of the day, of course, it's all about profitability. And Netflix has been putting that in sharp focus, uh, at least for the moment. Um, of course, <laughs> they really need to as they, some of the metrics that Wall Street's looking for, like the subscriber count, yeah, that seems to be uh, fading in a mature market. According to Ampre Analytics, Netflix's new ad tier could add up to $8.5 billion per year by 2027 with both the subscription fees and with ad revenues. I actually can't wait to see what uh, David Zoslov is about to cook up over at Warner Discovery based on what he's seeing in the marketplace. So you could really start to see some things uh, on the horizon that uh, could have you participating in more streaming services because um, maybe you'll be willing to uh, watch some ads to see some other content on a service you normally wouldn't pay for. But what do you think? Do you think that these new ad-based tiers at the streaming services will be a game changer? They certainly do. They're definitely going to add some extra money to their wallet based on the same content they're already doing. And to be honest with you, I suspected Disney was going to do this from the very beginning because of the length of the episodes for most of their television product. Next question is, are you likely to carry more streaming services for less money because you'll just be exchanging a little bit of your time in the form of ads for the privilege of watching one of these streaming services. Please leave your thoughts down below and uh, let's compare some notes. Um, I really do need the engagement, so the more comments, the better. Speaking of which, do support independent creators here on the platform. They absolutely need it and they need the engagement like comments, the like button, they need subscriptions, and of course they need you to share out their content. And so do I, so please help. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene. And until next time, bye.
Thanks for visiting today. Be sure you're subscribed and hit that for alerts. Yay! Of course, like and share all of the videos that you can as it helps with the algorithm. Have a great day.